More than 60 years ago, the federal government dried up the San Joaquin River and sent its water down canals to irrigate crops. Now, a historic restoration effort is returning both water and salmon to the river. This is Switzer Network News. With hundreds of dams and thousands of miles of canals, California's hydraulic landscape has been radically transformed. One of the most significant changes was the draining of the San Joaquin River. In the 1940s, the Bureau of Reclamation built Friant Dam and the Madera and Friant Kern Canals and began diverting most of the river to farm fields as far as 150 miles away. As a result, a 60-mile stretch ran dry in all but the wettest years, and the river's salmon runs were wiped out. The prospect of restoring the San Joaquin arose in the late 1980s, when a coalition of environmental groups sued the Bureau of Reclamation. They relied on a legal precedent established in the battle to restore water to the tributaries of Mono Lake. This law that was on the books for 60 years called Fish and Game Code 5937, which requires dam owners to release enough flow below the dam to keep the fish that existed there in good condition. That we established that in the Mono Lake case in the late 80s, and uh, at, at that same time, the National Resources Defense Council, along with the Bain Institute and the 13 other plaintiffs, had filed suit uh, challenging the contract renewals in the San Joaquin River. They amended that complaint to include this 5937. Uh, uh, action, and that is actually what has, has got the water back in the river. So. In 2006, 18 years after the suit was filed, a settlement was reached between the environmental groups, the federal government, and the Friant Water Users Authority, which represents the 27 water districts that receive water from Friant Dam. Under the agreement, the water districts give up an average of about 13% of the water they used to get from the canals. Plans also call for habitat restoration, levee improvements, and salmon reintroduction. The, the significance of restoring the San Joaquin River is that we're bringing life back to the second longest river in the Central Valley, and life meaning not just the spring-run salmon that were extirpated and, and, and endangered species in the California Central Valley, but we're bringing the people back to the river. We're giving the river back to the people of California and the people of San Joaquin Valley who for 60 years have lost the river, have been disconnected from the river. And it will not only uh, provide home and habitat for the salmon, but it will recharge groundwater, it will improve the water quality, uh, it will increase the flows into the uh, California's uh, central the delta. And uh, so it, it's, it's, it's more than just the salmon. Starting late next year, eggs and young salmon from Northern California will be transplanted to a hatchery below Friant Dam. These early efforts will likely produce only a few hundred adult fish returning to spawn. By 2024, though, federal fisheries officials hope to have a spawning population of 40,000 salmon. The restoration program faces a number of obstacles since the river has been heavily modified. Gravel mining in the river basin over many decades has removed sediment, degrading salmon spawning habitat. In addition, the river's natural course has been altered dramatically. Levees and flood control channels have redirected its flow, and in many places crops are planted right up to the edge of the river. Switzer fellow Mark Tompkins, funded in part by a Switzer leadership grant, is working on ways to quantify the benefits of restoring the river to a more natural state. We are trying to develop tools, technical tools, to, to help quantify the benefits of reconnecting those areas along the river that have been disconnected, uh -huh. floodplain areas that have been disconnected. Okay. And the reason we're doing this is because it's, it's, it's very easy to quantify the benefits of putting that flood protection there. Those levees, have, they protect houses or ag land that is, has a value that's pretty easy to quantify. When you're trying to take that protection out and convert it to a more natural habitat, it's much more difficult to put a value mm -hmm. on that. And so getting to that decision to actually do the reconnection of floodplains for a long time now has, has needed this development of better technical tools uh -huh. and really, okay, so how long will this species of salmon get out on the floodplain? How much will that contribute to their growth? And ultimately then how much will that contribute to the recovery of the species, mm -hmm. which that does have a real economic and other benefits. Mm -hmm. That's what Though the restoration program is underway, it still faces opposition. Some farmers along the river say the new flows are waterlogging their crops. One has sued. In addition, Republicans in Congress, led by Tulare Area Representative Devin Nunes, are pushing to block the program's funding. This is Switzer Network News.